and welcome back to another color grading tutorial today we're going to be editing like the artist dpc photography basically daniel casson Casson, something like that this is the artist here uh, go ahead and check him out on instagram uh, really cool photos and i'm pretty sure he's based in uk um I'm not 100 percent sure but this is like lots of scotland photos i'm pretty sure that's scotland um looks like he takes a lot of photos in the uk which is really cool because not many photographers are who do this sort of style like moody style photos are from the UK, they all live in Norway. Um, that's a really cool photo. So you can see what they do uh, in these photos. What he does is he's got very um, strong greens, um, sort of moody vibe photos, which works very well with the uh, English climate, I have to say. Um, yeah, um, lots of clarity here, for example, very bright highlights, lots of contrast. Um, so he'll either take them during the day, midday, or um, like this one, for example, uh, here in the early morning, that must be with all the fog uh, mist. Uh, that'll be early morning as well, um, or like evening here, for example. So yeah, really cool photos, and that's the kind of idea of this video today. Now, before we get started in this video, if you want to go ahead and check out, we have a free Lightroom training course down below in the description. It's an hours long, massive tutorial. You're going to learn all the advanced techniques you need to know within Lightroom. Plus, you can learn more as well. Um, and everything in there is going to be in depth in massive amount of detail, more than we can ever do on YouTube, just because there's not enough time in these YouTube videos. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in after this video, not during, go ahead and click and uh, register for that. Uh, you can also go ahead and grab all of our presets. For those of you asking, the link is also in the description. But yeah, without any further ado, let's get started in this video. So this is kind of what we're going to be basing our edit off today. And... Um, uh, so the person who suggested it to us was uh, Polly Polly. Um, she said, please make an edit on DPC photography and Instagram. Uh, so we're going to do that today. We're going to be having a go and seeing what we can do. Now, if there's something you want to see in a video, just comment down below and I will try and get around to making a video on it. Um, so we're going to jump over into Lightroom and this is the photo uh, we're going to be editing. I'm just going to bring my wonderful little face over here. Um, and make it a little bit smaller and have a chat about what the plans are. So this is the photo we're going to be editing. and Obviously, we're going to be trying to make the greens a lot more bluey green, um, get that kind of moody feel going on. Uh, the highlights will probably keep bright. Uh, the rest of it, adding in a lot of contrast, a lot of clarity. Um, I can try and remove some people from this image as well. Don't want to spend too much time doing that. Just let you know you can do it all within Lightroom if you really want to. But that's the idea for the video. Stick around to the end if you want to learn some really in-depth color grading techniques as well. Um, so yeah, let's get started without any further ado. So, first things first, let's jump onto the basic panel. Um, and what I'm going to do here is add in some contrast. Not too much, but enough to get started. And then I'm just going to flick over here, open this one up, and we're going to be basing it around this edit here. Right. Okay, so I'm going to drop the highlights a tiny bit. I want enough to be able to see a little bit of cloud, like here, but not too much. Um, so we've got a little contrast to add, which we've done. Then um, I think the uh, it's lighter, it'll lighten up a tiny bit more, not too much. Then we're going to add in some more contrast, increase the whites, drop the blacks. I tend to do this in a lot of images just because it adds a little bit more contrast and brightens things up a bit. Then we're going to raise up the shadows just a touch, just because I want to save some detail from the shadows. Uh, I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit more now we've brightened up the whole image with the whites. Um, you won't need to use these exact numbers, it'll depend on what your actual photo looks like. Then we're going to get the clarity and add in some clarity, that's about 25, 30. Um, the reason we're doing that is if you look at the side of the house here, um, it looks very sort of sharp, very, very um, fine contrast, if that makes sense. Um, and that is basically what happens when you use the clarity tool. Uh, the other thing to do is we're going to um, boost the vibrance ever so slightly and then just drop the saturation down to around minus 25. Just messing around here, trying to choose the right area. But that'll do quite nicely, I think. Right, let's close that up. Then we're going to, if you want to learn how to do those really cool greens, stay until the end. I'm going to do those at the end. Um, so first of all, we're going to do the tone curve. We're already getting there, to be honest, just by making the image desaturated. So it's looking like it might work quite well. Um, also, if you want this photo to edit along, um, jump on to Google. Go on to uh, We Saturate. Don't necessarily search for goat. but uh, 
Uh, you can find it if you just search for castle or something like that, it'll come up. You want to download the raw file, not the JPEG. There's loads of other ones, but don't download the raw file. Um, that just allows you to follow along. Um, right, and then we're going to drop the blacks, just come down here, crush the blacks a little bit. Not too much, but enough to add in some really cool contrast to the background here. And then we're going to come up and fade out the shadows a little bit like this. Just lift up the shadows um, and then begin to get like, if you look here in the shadows, that sort of grey black, that's the fade that we're adding there. So lift that up and then drag it in there, adding a bit of fade. Um, and to be honest, if you ask me, I think the shadow's a bit too black here. So we'll lift up the shadows there as well, which means we have more. We want to add in like a light fade, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, as in like in terms of brightness. If you have the blacks crushed too much, it's a very dark fade. Uh, hers is very, his is very gentle. Uh, is it her or he? I'm not really sure. Um, I can't remember the name. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it has a very gentle fade, so that'll do. Uh, we'll also put a bit of fade in the highlights as well, like that. And there we have it. We're getting there. Now we've got to think about the colors. So uh, split toning. Um, we're going to come on to optional alt and drag up the hue slider. Now in the highlights, we're going to be going for a sort of tealy bluey green, I think, because looking here, actually I'm thinking about this, maybe not. Let's see what it looks like with tealy bluey green. If not, we'll go for like a sort of mauve, I think, or green, uh, something like that. And then for the shadows, let's have a look down here. I think it's a sort of blue tinge to the shadows. Cool way of doing this would be to put it into Photoshop and use the color picker tool and then click on the highlights and you can see what colors they've got. It sometimes works, but I don't really want to open Photoshop, to be honest. Um, so to see the colors, if you don't know this, just press Option or Alt on your keyboard and you can just drag this slider along. And we'll go for this color. This is usually quite a good color to use for the shadows when you're doing moody color grades because it adds a lot of depth to these images um, and makes quite a big difference. It makes it kind of have that sort of rain vibe going on. But look at the trees getting there already. So that's the split turning. Uh, very slight difference, but turn it off and on again, you can really see the uh, difference it's made. Now the camera calibration. We're going to have a mess around with the green primary, so we're starting to get onto those greens. If I drag it to the right, you get those very, um, I don't know, and, um, so you can mess around with the saturation a bit, you can drop the saturation or you can increase the saturation, up to you. I don't want to get that high in the greens, just want to kind of, that'll do. Right. Now for the long-awaited HSL sliders. Um, so what we're going to do here is first work on the brickwork of the castle. Now a lot of these photos have these old little cottages, um, sort of Cotswold style cottages, which are quite cool. And they've got this almost warm brick vibe going on. Now here I think our orange is a little bit too green. So let's get our oranges and drag our oranges down. If I take it to the right it makes it more yellow and green. So Take it down. I'm yearning timber. Okay, drop the reds as well. Now this is obviously going to depend. If you've got um, someone in your photo, you probably don't want to do this because their skin's going to look really strange and dodgy. Um, next thing to work on is the yellows. Now I think the yellows are mostly on the castle, so take those down a bit. In fact, I think I've gone too far on the oranges. Somewhere around there. Now I'm going to just boost the saturation on the orange just so I can really begin to see what colour we're getting on that building. I think we're getting there. I want to make sure that this image doesn't look too cold and green is basically the plan here. So we're working quite delicately on those oranges because we're going to make the greens look really wild in a second. Um, now for the blues, she doesn't really... He, I've got to work this out. Okay, he... Um, <laughs> Daniel, if you're watching, I'm really sorry. Um, so the blues, I think it's because there's another artist who does a very similar thing. Um, the blues aren't particularly teal. So we're going to take the blue slider to the right, take out the teals, especially with the aquas as well. Introduce back in the sort of purpley blue that we uh, need in this image. As for the purples and magentas, we can just leave those alone. That looks quite nice, doesn't it? Um, now the saturation on the blues boost that up a little bit just because it kind of adds a little bit more interest to the image and especially if it's in the sky we want to be able to see it. Um, next thing to work on is the greens. Um, now the green slider here 
if we take it to the left, it makes it very orange, but if you take it to the right, you get some really wacky wild blue greens, which is what we're aiming for. So look at here, this color here, we're gonna get that by, where's it gone, up here, increasing the greens to the right. So we're gonna start with about there, that's probably a bit too much, but we can always come back and change it. Then coming onto the saturation slider and just dropping the saturation of the greens down, like quite dramatically, you won't realize how much, but you need to take it down quite a bit, somewhere around there. Uh, then we're going to come to the luminance slider and we're just going to brighten up those greens a bit, not too much, and then the yellows, and then the oranges and the reds, just brighten everything up a little bit, take the greens back a bit. Um, and that's about it, to be honest, that is more or less the colour grade that we're aiming for. Oh, we're going to play Patank. Um, so that's the colour we're going for, and um, I think that's the edit done to be honest. Now if there's any more color grades you want to see, if there's anything else like this that you uh, kind of want to uh, learn about or learn how to color grade like, um, we do lots of moody color grades so there are loads of these moody color grades on the channel. This is just a slightly different one, it's not as moody as all the other ones. Um, one thing you could try out is getting the gradient slider onto the sky and kind of really messing around and making the sky really moody. Um, one thing which I'm going to show you now which could actually help a little bit with this image is getting the brush slider. Um, we're going to increase the temperature of the brush, uh, if I can reset it, and then increase the temperature of the brush. Close square bracket to make the brush bigger, and then you can just paint on the castle just to kind of warm it up a little bit, and then along here. Um, I just think it helps an awful lot if the castle has got its own sort of warmer colour, because it sticks out a load more from the trees. If it's too cold, the whole image looks too flat, and there's not enough colour contrast in there. So. Get rid of that and you see the difference that makes. It's very subtle but it's quite a decent little uh, addition for this um, colour grade. So I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. Um, like I said, you can go ahead grab all the presets. We have loads of moody presets in this bundle. You can go grab it uh, down below. It's on a massive discount at the moment. Um, and also check out our free tutorial if you want. Um, but yeah, in the tutorial we're teaching you some really advanced light editing techniques. But yeah, I will see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.